Our next speaker is Rabbi Tzvi Hirsch Weinrep, PhD. He's the rabbi of Congregation Shomra Emuna in Baltimore. He has a private practice of psychotherapy and is the founder of the National Registry of Certified Group Psychotherapists. It's a great honor to have with us Rabbi Weinreb. Thank you. I hope to kind of proceed in, in a circle and end up with some of the uh, themes that Dr. Nadelson so uh, ably enunciated. Themes related to uh, transgression of professional boundaries and specifically um, those that are of a sexual nature. But I hope to look together with you not just at the profession of, uh, of medicine and more specifically psychiatry and psychotherapy, but also at the profession of clergy and more specifically at the rabbinate. Because I'm afraid to say that rabbis too are often guilty, or sometimes guilty, of uh, boundary violations. So I'd like to begin this circle by providing you with a philosophical framework, a Jewish philosophical framework for looking at questions of ethics in general, and specifically at this extremely important topic of professional boundaries. Now the framework I'm going to give you is not the only framework from which to look at ethical questions, but it is a supplemental framework to a lot of what you've been hearing so far and we'll hear more about at this conference. Because most of what's been discussed here, heretofore, are ethical frameworks drawn from our tradition, from the halachic tradition, that tell people what to do. What to do in specific situations, what to do in times of crises, in times of problems, in times when one is put to ethical tests. But there's another vantage point from which to look at the ethical dilemmas which we face. And that is not what should I do, but rather who am I? Who am I? Because often the answer to that question, who am I? determines what is right, what must be done, over and above the answer to the question of what do I do. Often one has to ask the question not is this right or wrong, but is this right or wrong for me, given who I am, given the role that I am playing at this particular moment in society, given the status that I have in my social surround. And it becomes imperative that we have some notion, each of us in the depths of his or her conscience, of who we are. I'd like to give some examples drawn from Talmud and Maimonides to show you how in rabbinic literature this concept becomes crucial. And to show you once again, perhaps, that the Jewish code of law is not just do's and don'ts, but it also struggles with that most important of human questions, and that is, who am I? The question that psychologists, psychiatrists call the question of identity, of self-concept. The Talmud, in the tractate known as Yoma, page 86a, asks a question, Hechi dami chilul Hashem. What is an example of chilul Hashem? Chilul Hashem can be translated as the profanation of the name of God. Probably the most serious offense in the Jewish repertoire of sins to profane God's name, to desecrate his name. What is an example of the desecration of God's name? And the Talmud gives a strange answer. 
The desecration of God's name is not standing on a platform and blaspheming. It has nothing to do with defaming the name of God, perhaps by writing the name God and erasing it. But here's the answer, one answer that the Talmud gives. Omar Rav, the great sage known as Rav said, Kagon Ano, such as I, if I, Rav, given my position of prominence in the community, if I would take meat from a butcher, and I would not pay him immediately. He's done nothing wrong. The butcher is certainly willing to take Rav's credit, to let Rav pay his bill a week from now, a month from now. But if Rav were to enter a butcher store and not pay cash on the line for the meat he was getting, this would be Chilul Hashem. The key words, Kagon Ano, such as I. Rav realized that given his status in the community, his standards of conduct were different, higher than for the average person. In terms of right or wrong, do's or don'ts, there's nothing wrong with taking meat from a butcher who's willing to extend you credit and saying, I'll pay you tomorrow, I'll pay you at the end of the month. But Rav had to hold himself to a higher standard because of kagon ano, such as I. I have a different standard. My professional status is of a leader in the Jewish community, and therefore a higher standard is expected of me.